Alright guys, what is up? This is Mihai and welcome to a brand new video. This time we're going to talk about a subject that I believe matters to many people. Uh, and that is the battery performance and battery life of the Galaxy S10. If you're considering getting this phone, this might really interest you. I have covered this in my full review of the S10, but only briefly. This time we're going to have a more in-depth look into this. Okay, so in order for you guys to understand where I'm coming from and what I'm comparing the S10 to directly, I should start by saying that I upgraded to the S10 from an HTC 10. That is now a 3 years old smartphone and of course you'll say that after 3 years it's completely normal for the battery life not to be as great, but in all honesty the HTC 10 had a poor battery life from day 1. We have to mention of course that the HTC has a 3000 milliamps battery versus the 3400 present on the Samsung and it has an LCD display rather than uh, an AMOLED one. LCDs do use a lot more battery power but besides that in my opinion what drains the phone's battery so much is a poor power management by the software and processor. By contrast, the S10 seems to have quite a performant battery management and no matter what I throw at it, it will last me through a full day. And I would say that I'm quite a heavy user. To give you an example, I start the day off by listening to music through Bluetooth, um, either on the earphones or in the car, plus I use Waze for navigation, mainly because I have Alzheimer and I forget where I live, and secondly, in order to avoid traffic. Also, I game on it, I use social media, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, taking photos, a bit of everything really. So, I mentioned the power management on the S10 and if you go into the settings, you will find device care and also digital well-being, where you can see how much time you've been spending on each app. I'm telling you, it's a bit scary when you realize it. But let's get back to the topic of this video. And this is how you get to the phone's battery performance, storage and RAM memory optimizers. These features are not new by any means to a smartphone, but they happen to be one of the best implementations that I've ever seen. And uh, also having them built into the system rather than third-party apps is also a plus. Keep in mind that the phone optimizes automatically from time to time and that you don't really have to do this manually. And uh, also that there is a scheduled restart that you can set whenever you want, for example once a week, Saturday at 3am, to keep it running smooth. So there's the memory, where you can close down apps in order to free your RAM. Uh, this phone has 8GB of it, but the thing I'm sure you've noticed as well with RAM memory is that the more you have, the more your device will use up. For example, if this phone had 20GB of it, I'm pretty sure it would use up 10GB. Uh, I mean, it's not hard to fill it up with open apps and apps that run in the background, so closing them from time to time is recommended, but it's not something I would worry about either. Then we have the storage. You can clean it up as well, it will delete cache and unnecessary data. You can also have an analysis of the files stored and it will let you know which are the biggest files um, or if you have duplicates or files which you haven't used in the last uh, 6 months. And then there is the battery optimizer. This shows you how much of your battery each of your apps use estimates how much longer the phone will last with current battery and if you press on power mode, a few options will appear. I didn't have to change anything because I've never felt like I don't have enough performance or that my battery is drained too fast, so I've left it on optimized, which is the most balanced mode between performance and battery saving, and uh, I believe it's perfect for most people. But you do have the option for a performance mode or two other power saving modes, one being more extreme than the other, it will probably cut down on the background app's activity and various other functions like how often it checks for new emails received, messages or um, how often the weather updates and other such things. But I have activated the uh, adaptive power saving which makes the phone able to switch between the modes depending on the usage and uh, battery level. Also, if you click on settings, there's even more of them. So I'll quickly go through each, starting off with the notifications. The phone will let you know if there's an app running in the background, which is using up the power. Then uh, the adaptive battery, which limits the battery usage for apps that you don't use often. And this is of course something that the phone learns over time and it won't do anything when you first pull it out of the box. 
put unused apps to sleep. This is pretty much self-explanatory, but um, you, you also have the options to manually select which apps cannot run in the background. Also disable unused apps, uh, essentially apps which you haven't used in the past 30 days. Optimize the battery when you're not using the phone and fast cable charging. You can actually turn it off and it lets you know that you might want to do that because the phone heats up a bit when it's fast charging, but it's just getting a bit warm, nothing to worry about. Uh, by comparison, the HTC 10 I had was really heating up with its quick charge 3.0 charging and the first few times that I charged it, I was worried. I, I was thinking that there's something wrong with it, but that's just how HTC made it. And uh, the last option is the fast wireless charging toggle. It informs you that you may hear a fan noise while using uh, wireless fast charge 2.0. And that would be the fan from the duo pad that uh, ramps up at about 10, 15 seconds after you start charging. But the fan noise is really low, nothing to be bothered by. All right, that pretty much takes us through all the battery settings that we have on the S10. In conclusion, I can say that this is a solid performer battery wise and uh, that the 3400 capacity battery on it is more than enough to get most people through an entire day of use. However, if you want even more, the S10 Plus packs a 4100 capacity one, which is quite a considerable difference. For me personally though, this one is more than enough. And uh, besides that, regarding the S10 Plus, the deal breaker for me was the double camera hole on the front. And uh, the second one is not even used as a camera per se. It's only a depth sensor, which will theoretically improve the background blur in selfies, if that's what you want. I hope you guys found this useful and if so, please hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe for more videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.